Welcome to NLS4 and I don't know if you can see that sunset there but it looks amazing and that is because it is absolutely boiling. It's been about 35 degrees today and uh, it's the hottest the track has ever been for a long time. So uh, we've been testing today, it's NLS4 tomorrow um, and yeah we had a weird day because the car feels completely different in the hot temperatures, it affects the engine, it affects the tyres, the handling etc. So. Um, yeah, we uh, had a productive session this afternoon, um, trying to get the best race car we can underneath us. And we think we'll be competitive still. There's only 16 GT3 cars this weekend, so a big drop from the 30 plus cars there were last time out. But um, it was a clash with DTM at Spa and the GT Masters at Lautzitzring as well. So a lot of the uh, other teams and guys are over at those race meetings. So yeah, less competitive, which is a shame, but um, just more testing, testing, testing for 24. Back in the car with Christian and Mikkel this weekend, so the three of us, um, yeah. So yeah, we should head back tomorrow for tomorrow because it's going to be funny tomorrow because I think there'll be a thunderstorm probably around when the race starts. So that'll really make it pretty crazy and hopefully an exciting race. So we will check back in the morning then. Ciao, ciao. Good morning from all wet to Nürburgring. Enough said. So for anyone that has followed this channel for probably the past 12 months or so will know that wet weather conditions are not the M6 and uh, the Yokohama tyres strongest conditions. Therefore when we uh, saw the forecast leading up to the weekend and then we were hoping to get in a dry lap just before the weather came in in qualifying, however it came in and came in properly. Uh, which meant that it was an extended test session, we knew that we were going to be super competitive. Uh, Yokohama have made some steps forward with the tyre, which is really good, uh, and has certainly closed the gap to the Michelin tyre, which is arguably the uh, benchmark in these wet conditions. Um, however, yeah, we knew that this was just more learning to try and step forward going on for the rest of the race meeting. Mikkel had his first chance to try the Yokohama wet uh, in the drying conditions and he actually banged in uh, an awesome lap time uh, which put us up the front of the grid and arguably only 10 seconds off the Michelin Rover racing car. That was a big big step forward to, for, since what we've had in the past so big thanks to Yokohama for putting in the effort and uh, yeah, getting us this result. This is a video I took on the grid because I take my phone with me when I drive if I get stuck out on the circuit and literally everyone was changing from wet to cut slicks or slicks on the grid. Um, it was that close to margin for the beginning of the race which is good for us because we wanted a dry race. This is the start, actually managed to get a half decent start on the way into turn one. It's damp here, pretty much everyone is on slicks here uh, so it's pretty tricky into turn one. So walking you through the first half of this lap, managed to stay inside and kind of hold my position here. And then go to the inside here, not the optimum line on uh, damp and slick tyres, as on the exit you then can't get the traction down. Managed to get my nose up the inside of Assenheimer for turn three, and then that is Maxime Martin, uh, Aston Martin factory driver in a Porsche ahead of me. Here I thought all was lost, and I lost a bit of ground, but I managed to hook up a nice bit of dry tarmac, which slingshotted me round the outside of two cars there, uh, and I was able to um, hold my position. I had a quick look at Martin on the way into the cut through. I thought I'd try and get to the second apex before him, but not quite. Again, couldn't quite get the power down as he squared the corner off more than I did, and the Porsche's got good traction. Here, I really wanted to clear Maxine because I know he's not the most experienced guy around the Nordschleife and if we got onto the Nordschleife behind him we would then lose. Uh, he had a little wobble on the way out um, onto the back straight here but I managed to get a good run on him and was able to get the move done before the kink. He backed out admittedly, didn't really fight it as hard as he could have which was good for me and then I could just set about catching the top three. So yeah, for first uh, Grand Prix lap I'd already made... Um, three places up from the starting position. Standard start for me really, just wanting to go forward uh, and catch the boys up ahead. Right, we said early in the show that the number 34 walking horse uh, BMW normally tends to have a very attacking start. Two positions gained already, up from seventh into fifth place, right on the tail of the Frickadelli Porsche, the red and black Porsche. Seems to have more traction coming down the hill. He's going to try and make a move into the kink before you rise up behind the paddock. He's, oh, he's pulled it off up into fourth place. Can't tell you who's driving that. And so this part of the first lap really shows you what the Nordschleife is like. We're just coming through Kallenhard here and it's kind of damp. 
However, once we get onto the new tarmac here and come into Piff Path and then going towards Miss Hit Miss, you can see spray coming up from the car ahead. And this is not what you want to see when you're on slick tyres around the Nürburgring. So now it's just a case of survival. It doesn't matter being about being fast or slow. You just want to try and get through the wet patch patches and then back onto the dry tarmac here. We're back onto the old tarmac again now. Uh, and actually seems to dry quicker than the new tarmac. And uh, then you come out of air siphon here, and then it's bone dry again, which is just typical Norwich life. One minute you've got spray, one minute the tarmac's completely dry. So after a good first lap, I was ended up pushing Nicky Katzberg down the Dottinger Hur and looking to get past him for third place. Didn't manage to slipstream past him, story of the year so far anyways. But here he just has a little wiggle through the Hohen Rhine chicane, like a nip to the right hand side get back onto the dry tarmac and then I was away. So that put me into third, which was a mega start from seventh. Um, yeah, roll on the rest of the race. Eng geht es zwischen den BMW Markenkollegen zu. David Pittert klopft kurz an bei Nicky Ketzburg und geht vorbei. One lap later, the position reversed where my tyres started to go off a little bit and Nicky's tyres started to come on a little bit. So rather than fight my fellow BMW driver, I thought it'd be best to just slot in behind him and then try and gap the rest of the guys behind. So here we jump forward about half an hour, 45 minutes into the second stint of the race when we're back on another set of slick tyres and the track is completely dry. You'll see on the right hand side there, there was a code 60 flag. Uh, so I'm holding my 60 kilometres an hour and the green flag is waving. However, the green flag at the previous Marshall post was waved to the car behind and not me. Which meant that Assenheimer was in his right to unfortunately overtake me, but uh, I was stuck in my Code 60 limiter, uh, where he gained a huge amount of time and I dropped back behind him, which was very, very frustrating. So I was really annoyed and really pissed off and I wanted to catch him as soon as I could. Luckily, however, he got held up on the way onto the Dottinger Hur and for probably the first time this year and the first time in a long time, I actually managed to slipstream past someone on the Dottinger Hur in the M6. So, um, yeah, that was quite a good feeling to have that place back and it kind of felt like uh, karma had reset itself. But, yeah, he'd still gained a lot of time on me, which was a little bit disappointing to have. The action wasn't finished there as I had a little Days of Thunder moment as I went through the gravel, kept it pinned and then went to the outside of a back marker. Things static, so you've got to do something, so better to get on with it. Uh, whether that plays out at the end, of course, the conditions can change, who knows? But I think at the time it was exactly the right thing to do. Backmarker trying to keep out of the way of one of those. Next lap, and another moment with some backmarkers in the same place, which was pretty lucky for me. But then if you see the car behind. Who's leading this race, and Asenheimer, who's giving chase, knocking brakes there from Pittard, cutting. Well, there was a very near collision. I... Right, let me just slow that down and explain it. Very tight exit from the chicane for the race leading BMW of David Pittard. Two back markers were they're some of the slowest cars in the field. These are not regular back. As the stint went on, I really couldn't shake Assenheimer. We didn't have some optimum tyre pressures, which is my dr racing driver's excuse anyways. But we did have a pretty epic as a result of it. I had a little mistake on the way into the final chicane there. As you see from the next onboard clip, I had a massive oversteer on entry. Uh, the Merc got the run on me and I managed to keep him super close, get back in the toe again uh, and then hold the inside line on the way into turn one. So this instance, the slipstream seemed to work for me. Here's the big snap entry oversteer. I'm not sure if I got in a little bit of dirt there and just snatched the rear brakes or on down change, but either way I was immediately on defensive. Defensive, sorry. You can see Asenheimer in the mirror on the left hand side. He's got the run on me already. I managed to stay as close as I dared to get back in the side draft and that slingshot me back alongside him on the way into turn one. So I was lucky to time that right and then hold the position into turn one. <laughs> In the end though, I wasn't able to hold off the power of the Merc as my front tyres were slowly going more and more off um, with the pressures we tried to predict for the green track surface after the track has dried. So going up the hill, Asenheim has already pulled alongside me and I tried to use the traffic to box him in but he had too much power to just drive around the outside of me. So unfortunately that was that and after that I knew that he was just going to drive on, off into the distance as my front tyres slowly became worse and worse. So for the next lap and a half was just damage limitation before I could hand over to a teammate with a fresh set of tyres. Unterschiedliche Boxenstopp Strategien wechselt die Führung mehrfach. Patrick Ass. So it took Christian four attempts to re-pass the Merc and make it stick because the Merc would just drive back past him in a straight line uh, before handing back over to Mikkel for the final stint. 
so we are back to sort of a net P2 uh, overall, which we're, we're really happy. We just had to wait for the stops to, to clock out. And uh, again, Mikel drove a mega job, super fast final stint also. Um, really lucky to be sharing with two mega fast teammates that I fully trust with the car and fully know that they can do a mega job. Uh, and yeah, it still wasn't plain sailing though, as Mikkel was nursing a little bit of a brake issue that we had uh, in the heat of the final uh, stint. So he was heard him on the radio. Sort of at one point, we were debating whether to box the car because uh, it was obviously becoming dangerous. But Mikkel was able to drive around the issue and also retain um, the gap to third and maintain the gap to first as well. So. Um, yeah, he did a mega job to manage the situation. This was then the gap we had at the end of the race. The Rover racing car with half an hour to go was just coming through the Vidal chicane and then onto the Nordschleife. And then he cut back to us, just coming through the kink onto the back straight. Uh, it was around 20 seconds and like I said, Mikkel managed the situation, managed the gap to the Merck behind and the BM in front uh, very well to then bring the car home for P2, which um, all things considered for a pretty tricky race, uh, was a good job at the end so for rover racing suddenly their season has come on very nicely indeed thank you and the lap final lap as i said back off take it easy just bangs in an eight minute 9.1 second lap fastest car for that uh fastest lap for that car in the race second place only now being completed it's another bmw it is Mikkel jensen the dane who's had such a success this year so looking back at the strategy the early pit stop maybe wasn't the best thing to have done then with the tyre pressures and the Code 60 incident, we dropped a little bit more time. Uh, Christian was then held up by the Merc that we then dropped behind and he spent all stint trying to get past it and eventually did. Uh, and then Mikkel was uh, nursing the brake issue at the end and we, in the end, only finished 20 seconds down on the lead. So it was a little bit of a race of what could have been, really. But still, mega job for us um, going forward for the rest of the year. It was great to see a BMW 1-2 as well. Um, so yeah, great and news for the brand in itself. Anyways, we've got one more race before the 24 hours, the six hours, the NLS race at the end of August. Um, so yeah, sharing with a new teammate, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, this insight into the race. Um, if you did, make sure you give this video a like. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you give this channel a subscribe and uh, share this with a racing friend that might enjoy it. Until the end of August for NLS 5, ciao ciao.